This video covers something that is a bit of an advanced topic, but it's interesting to see. I think it's good for students to know about early on. And it's also nice in that it shows how you can do something that is an advanced topic fairly easily in Scala. And this is the concept of a parallel for loop. So pretty much every machine that you use these days actually has multiple cores inside of it, has the ability to process multiple things at one time, and so in order to fully utilize the power of your hardware, you shouldn't be doing one thing at a time, but you should be doing many things at a time. Depending upon what computer you happen to be using, you might need to do two things or four things or eight things. The machine that I happen to be working on for making this video, I would have to do uh, 48 things simultaneously in order to be fully use, utilizing the, the hardware. How do we make Scala or other programming languages do that? Well, in some ways, it's, there's this more advanced topic that we cover later called multi-threading. And in the second volume, I go into to details for my CS2, go into details of how multi-threading works and what are some of the problems of it. But we can get multi-threading fairly easily using Scala. You just do have to be a bit careful about it. So how do we do that? Well. It turns out that for loops become parallel very nicely if we do one little change to them. So instead of just giving a normal collection here, the normal collections have methods in them called par. And we can see what that does if we take away the for loop part. We see that when we call dot par on a range, we get something called a par range. Now the par range has methods like map and filter and for each and flat map, just like the regular range does, but those versions will happen in parallel instead of sequentially. And so if I were going to do some more complex calculation, if I do it using the regular collection, it's going to go through and it will do all the math, but it will wind up doing it completely sequentially, one instruction after the other, and so I won't be utilizing the vast majority of my hardware. By putting the par here, it actually allows it to distribute the work across multiple uh, cores. And so if you had something that was a very intensive process, you could consider doing this, but you do have to take care with it. And just to show you that, I'm going to very quickly show you what you can mess up when you go to parallel. So we'll create a var i, and in some ways the rule of using parallel, try to never use vars. If you ever do anything that is parallel and a var, you're, you're asking for, for trouble. But I want to demonstrate the trouble that we can have. So we're going to do this. And then I'm going to write a little loop and I'm going to say J in one, two, let's go to a million. I plus equals one. So J is going to go up to a million. So this is going to happen a million times and every time I'm going to add one to I. So when I'm done with this, it should be fairly obvious that I should be a million. Okay. Seems reasonable enough. Definitely works. Let's set i back to zero. Now I'm going to do the same for loop, but I'm going to do these operations in parallel, which means that now I'm going to be have, have multiple threads that are trying to all add one to i simultaneously. Because computers are so fast these days, even going up to a million doesn't take very long, as we saw. So making it happen in parallel really doesn't speed anything up. The real problem here, though, is that i is nowhere close to a million. Uh, at only 65,000, uh, clearly lots of this was lost. And this is something that's called a race condition. As I said, in my CS2 and later videos, we'll talk about the details of this. Uh, but I wanted to show you that you can use par to do operations in parallel, you can use it to get more performance out of your computer if you happen to have a task that was going to be slow, 
but you should almost certainly do it without having any vars or mutability. So that also means be careful of arrays. If you're ever doing assignments into arrays, you can also create these things called race conditions, and then you can just get the wrong answer. So if you're going to try to use parallel for loops, make sure that everything that you're working with is immutable and see what you can do. See if you can actually come up with something that will run faster on your computer by making it happen in parallel.